everyone! Welcome to Bagel Top Games for another legendary Marvel DBG randomized game. We've got a really cool setup today, so let me tell you a little bit about it right now. Today we have Malekith the Accursed. Eight strength leads the Dark Council. His master strike, he captures villainous weapons and he does stuff with them. What he's trying to do is release mutating gamma rays on Earth. Yeah, it's on a timer, so I, when I pull seven twists, I lose. So each twist, I have to swap one of the cards I have with a card in the mutation stack. It happens to be a stack of Joe Fixit, Grey Hulk, so I'll get to that in a second. And I swap two cards at the same cost. But no matter what I do, on the seventh twist, I lose. So the important thing is to KO Malekith as fast as possible. Can't really slow anything down. So let's assemble our decks. First we have the villain deck, which includes Guardians of Nowhere, the Dark Council, the Ghost Racers, and five Master Strikes, and seven Scheme Twists. All right, let's give this a quick shuffle. All right, that's done. Now let's make the hero deck. So we've got to add Daredevil, Gamora, Phoenix, Luke Cage Noir, and Rick Jones. Let's give this a shuffle too, and... And there we go. Our hero stack is done. Our hero deck is done, I should say. Now I have to divide out the cards for two hands. So again, I play two-handed solo, so we have a left hand and the right hand. Left hand's gonna go first, right hand's gonna go second. I'm gonna alternate between sides. Yeah, I use this cap shield to let you know whose turn it is. You'll see title cards in the left and right letting you know whose turn it is as well. This is just so I don't forget. So let's move those over to their sides, flip them upside down, get the top six cards ready. Okay, let's populate our HQ. Luke Cage Noir, Rick Jones is, oh, Rick Jones is rare already. Phoenix, I don't like how high these cards costs are so far. Another Phoenix, and another Rick Jones. These costs are kind of high. Hopefully that won't be a problem for me. We have a ton of keywords this round. I need to make sure I keep them all straight. I use these to keep track of recruit and attack points. There may be some other things that pop up on the screen that'll let you know what's going on any given time during the game. So pay attention to that. And with that, let's get started. Left side's turn first. First villain card is... Oh, it's a scheme twist. So that's gonna go in the scheme twist pile. Okay, each player in turn does the following. Put a non-gray hero from your hand into the mutation pile. Okay, I'll stop there. I haven't gone yet. They're all gray, so nothing happens. Now let's have left take their turn. Okay, I have four shield agents and two shield troopers. That gives, that's going to give me four and two. Can't fight anything. Uh, can't buy any of these. Oh, except for Phoenix. Let's take a look at Phoenix for a moment. So Phoenix has soaring flight and piercing energy. That means, so Soaring Flight means when I recruit her, she goes to my uh, next hand as an extra card. Piercing Energy means you use this number to fight against their victory points. And then it's a one-time use, I KO the card. I need Recruit right now, but it's better than nothing. Might let me get rid of a threat pretty early, so I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Turns over, next turn. Okay, Cinder has entered the city. Okay, Cinder's got a fight effect. If you are worthy, you get two recruit. Worthy means if you have any cards that cost five or more, you can fight them. So I'm not gonna have that yet. So let's put down what I've got in my hand. Okay, it looks like I've got four and two, just like the last turn. Can't fight anything with that. Let's take a look at this Rick Jones here. Okay, two recruit, which is good for this, this time in the game. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs three or more, transform into Captain Marvel. Won't transform for a while, but eventually it'll play out and I can get two recruit, so I will buy that. And a new hero comes in. It's Luke Cage Noir. Okay, so my turn's over. Okay, villain card. Oh, look at that. Check it out. It's my first villainous weapon. So this weapon's going to be attached to the next villain in the city and adds whatever the strength is to its strength. So plus three for this one. So Cinder is a, an eight now. Harder to fight. New hand. Okay, another four and two. Nothing to fight. I forgot. This had soaring flight, so it's part of my hand right now. So I could use it right now. The victory points on that didn't change. So the victory points on this one are three. You know what? I could fight that with my piercing energy, gain it right now, and then also gain this right away, which gives me three attack when I throw it. Very good for early game. Phoenix is going to use her obliterating fire on Cinder and destroy him. Okay, so this formerly villainous artifact, this thrown artifact goes to my discard pile and I can use it sooner than later. 
and I still have four recruit. Let me take a look at this loot cage. It's a solid recruit card. Works best with cards that are four or more. Okay, I played this, I forgot to. Um, you gotta go KO'd, buy. So Phoenix is KO'd, and I will buy this loot cage. It'll be good for a recruit, so I buy it. Okay, repopulate the HQ. Ooh, another Phoenix. Phoenix might be very useful this game. Spent my points, turns over. Right side's turn, next card. It's a villainous weapon. But unfortunately, there's no villains in the city, so it gets KO'd. That's just the way the villainous artifact crumbles. By the way, I'm pretty sure one of the villains, when it shows up, gets to summon this. So now that it's KO'd, I think I'm off the hook for that. So pretty good. KO'd again. Four recruit to attack once again. Again, nothing to fight. Nothing here to buy. So early, it's early game. I think I will buy a shield officer. What kind of shield officer do I get? Let's see. Okay, Maria Hill, I'll take it. Goes to the right side. Next turn. Doing okay so far, but that's just because I haven't drawn the scheme twist. I really need to hit Malekith sooner than later. If I hit him before he gets a Master Strike, that would be ideal. What do we got next? Oh, it's a Master Strike. Okay, let's move that. Let's find out what happens. Malekith captures a villainous weapon from the city or from any player's control or discard pile. Okay, let's do those one at a time. In the city, no villainous weapons here. There's none in any player's control or in anybody's discard pile. Because I drew it, it's in my hand, not discard pile. So Malekith does not get a villainous weapon. Then this Master Strike enters the city as a villainous weapon called Dark Spear that gives plus two. And this is a Dark Spear, so let's give it plus two. Okay, but nothing happens. There are no villains, so it can't enter the city. This gets KO'd, so let's KO it right now. If you think I did that wrong, let me know, but I'm pretty sure I did that correctly. Okay, that's it. That, that's all that happens. Now I can take my turn. Let's see what I've got. Okay, here's my hand. First, let's play the shield agents. Now we'll play the shield troopers. Now I've got Yarnbjorn, first Axe of Thor, which is, a, which is a thrown artifact. Okay, when you throw this, you get three attack. Why not? I'm going to throw it right now. Oh, I know why not. There's nothing to fight. So I'll leave it out in my field. Let's put it there, and I'll wait for the opportune time to throw it. I also got Luke Cage Dewar. So two more recruit. You get one recruit for each other card you played this turn that cost four or more. Nothing else did, so I stick with the four. Everything's too expensive here. Let's buy one more shield officer. What kind do I get? Oh, it's Yo-Yo. I got lucky. Cool, I can send this hero undercover later, which means put it in my victory pile if I want to. Awesome. All right, so I paid for that. Didn't attack anything. My turn is over. Okay, to the right. And it's a scheme twist. Okay, go to the file. Each player does the following. Put a non-gray hero from your hand into the mutation pile. That's definitely going to happen this time. Here's the right side. They're all gray. Nothing happens here. Let's check the left side. Oh, I lied. It's not going to happen. Still, both sides are gray. So I don't swap for any gray hulks. Okay, unfortunately, the scheme twist counter has gone up, and I only have five left. So I need to be real careful. Okay, all gray cards, which will give me two attack and one, two, three, five recruit. Ooh, I can buy this. Rick Jones, let's take a look. Oh, I need to have five villains in my victory pile for this to work and transform. But hey, it's a three attack, which is not bad for somewhat early game. So let's go ahead and buy it. I'm saying buy it, it should be recruited. So I'm gonna change that language because that's what we do. We're not buying heroes or recruiting them. So we're going to recruit irradiated blood. That cost five and the new hero is another Rick Jones, not bad. Okay, nothing to attack, so let's end my turn. And we've got our first henchmen, the Ghost Racers. What do they say? Ambush, Rise of the Living Dead. Okay, that meant if I had any cards in my victory pile that had Rise of the Living Dead on top, they would come back, but I don't have any. Okay, let's see what cards I have. All right, it's a simple four and two. I could throw my weapon and get plus three. I think that's kind of overkill for now, so I'll pass on that, but I can buy something for four. What does this Rick Jones look like? Reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs three or more, transform it into Captain Marvel. I'm gonna look at the transformation. Transform! Okay, so this does two attack and helps me draw stuff. I don't really see a lot of color requirements in this game, so I think I'm gonna go with this, but I gotta transform it back first. I'm gonna recruit this and replenish. Oh, I got Luke Cage's rare too. I got two rares out here. Maybe I'll make enough to buy them soon. Okay, left side's turn is over. Okay, what do we have? Oh man, another scheme twist. The counter is really going up. Okay, the radiation is getting a lot worse. Once again, both sides are going to check to see if they have any non-gray cards. I always start with the hand who's going right now, so it's right side's turn. Okay, I've got a non-gray card. It is this four cost Rick Jones. Put a non-gray hero from your hand into the mutation pile. So let's move the mutation pile right here so we can see it. Rick Jones goes in. He's a four cost. So I can choose another card name with the same card cost from the pile into my discard. So let's see what we've got here. 
All right, this is the only one that costs four. Let's take a look at it. Choose a villain. You can basically use recruit points along with your attack to fight villains. Um, yeah, sure, I'll take that. It'll help me with uh, the Ghost Racers because it is a covert card. So let's put it in my discard. Okay, now left side has to do the same thing. Any non-grays? Oh, I have the same Rick Jones. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I have to put this in the pile and I have to choose a card with a different hero name so I can't take the other Rick Jones so let's take another threaten and bribe Joe fix it so this goes into my discard on the left all right right can take its turn what's in my hand okay all graves again we've got three and two. Oh, this needs to go away go away three recruit to attack can't fight anything can't buy anything here I think I have enough shield officers so let's recruit a sidekick which sidekick do I get Lockheed special sidekick I'll take it discard and that's all I'm gonna do so turns over all right what happens next and Drax enters the city. He is a five strength with a fight effect. Okay, I only have five cards because I had to take Rick Jones out and I put the replacement Joe Fix-It in my discard. So all I got is five and no attack. Everything's more expensive. This is getting to be a problem. I need more recruits. So I could throw this again and get plus three, but then I could only take out the Ghost Racers. So I will go ahead and get a shield officer so that I can get some more recruit, hopefully. And that shield officer is a standard Maria Hill. So recruit. Oh, I can also buy a sidekick. So I'll buy a sidekick. Let's see. All right, hairball goes to my discard pile. And that's it for this turn. All right, next villain card. And it's Angela from the Guardians of Nowhere. Is it Angela or Angela? I think it's Angela. No ambush effect. If she escapes, she becomes a mastermind. Don't want that to happen. Gotta control that. Bummer, it's all grays, but it is six recruit, which means I can purchase one of these three sixes. Let's look at our options. First, we've got Luke Cage. Four attack, it can basically cancel a wound. I don't know if I have a lot of things that'll give wounds this turn or this game at all. And let's take a look at this Phoenix. Reincarnating Phoenix, draw two cards. You may put a hero that was KO'd this turn into your discard pile. Hmm, this seems useful. Doesn't have the four attack, hmm. Okay, so my options are, if I go with Luke Cage, then I get four attack right now and that'll be helpful with not letting things escape. But if I take Phoenix, I get to draw a couple of cards, increase my hand size, and then maybe recover something. I think the Luke Cage is gonna be more useful right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and recruit Luke Cage and refill the HQ. Low cost Gamora, ooh, finally some shard cards appear. But I can't do anything else, so that's the end of this turn. Oh, another villain, he's gonna enter the city. And it happens to be Lao Fei, father of Loki. Oh, he's got an ambush effect. Lao Fei captures the casket of eternal winters from any villain, mastermind, player's control, or discard pile. Remember I mentioned that before? Here it is, it's in the KO pile because it came out and there were no villains. So, is the KO pile a villain, mastermind, player, control, or discard pile? It is none of the above, so he does not capture the casket at all. Sorry. Okay, got a more interesting hand this time. Okay, I've got four shield troopers. I'll play those so I get four attack. Next, I've got Luke Cage Noir. Follow big leads. You get two recruit off the bat, then you get one re more recruit for each other card you play that costs four or more. None of them do. I'm not gonna play any that cost four or more, so that's it. Then we've got Yo-Yo. Two more recruit. And I meet the requirement. You may send this hero undercover or put it on top of your deck. Okay, I'm gonna put it on top of my deck because I wanna buy more stuff, so top of my deck. Okay, when looking at the HQ, Gamora says gain two shards and then red covert gain another shard. I just got the red covert Joe Fixit card. I can afford this, so let's go ahead and recruit this Gamora. And the next card is a dual existence daredevil. Pretty cool. Oh, I can fight something too. I've got four attack. Ghost racers say fight, reveal a covert hero or KO one of your heroes with an attack icon. Don't have a covert hero in my hand. So first let's KO the Ghost Racers, and then let's KO one of my Shield Troopers since they have a fight icon. So KO. Okay, that's it. Turns over. I guess I could have thrown that artifact to get three more, but uh, I'll keep on saving that. All right, what do we have? Oh no, my fourth Scheme Twist. Scheme Twist pile. Only three more and I lose, and I haven't hit Malekith once. That's troublesome. So again, let's take a look at each hand and see if they have any non-great cards. I have Rick Jones, I've got Lockheed Sidekick, and I've got the other Grey Hulk. So because I have the Sidekick, Sidekick costs two. Let me double check real quick to see if there's a two cost in the Radiation deck. Okay, there is not, so I can't replace it. Oh, let me see if there's anything that's good for five or four. I know there's nothing good for, oh, I can, I can take back Rick Jones, but let's see if there's anything good for five. Nothing for five at all. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna swap Grey Hulk back in for the Rick Jones I originally had, so swap and this goes to my discard. 
What about the left side? I've got a three, I've got a two, and I've got a four. I'm gonna do the exact same thing and swap this Joe Fixit back for that Rick Jones. I need the recruit. These are all the really expensive. So take this, put it here, take Rick Jones back, and into my discard it goes. And this pile goes away. Now I can take my turn. Okay, what do I want to play? First, I'll play my gray cards. That's one and two, respectively. Now let's play Rick Jones. I don't have at least five villains in my victory pile, so only this this only gives me five, three attack. Let's play Lockheed. It gives me two more attack to make it seven, and I don't get to trigger his effect because I don't have a blue card. So I have enough to fight Angela. What's her fight effect? Fight is Fateful Resurrection. So what that means is I reveal the top card of the villain deck, and if it is a Master Strike or Scheme Twist, she comes back into the city. So I hope that's not the case. Okay, so the first thing that happens is she gets KO'd. Then we reveal the top card of the villain deck. If it's a Master Strike or Scheme Twist, she comes back, and it is a villain, so she does not come back. Awesome. All right, that's it. Next turn. Oh, and Lockheed goes back to the sidekick stack. Okay, we already know what it is, just enter the city. It's Ulik the Troll, he's of three strength and he gets plus two if I'm not worthy. Remember, to be worthy I need a card cost of five or more, I'm not worthy, so he's actually a plus two. First I'll play the Shield Agents, that's three. Then I'll play Yo-Yo, that's two more. I can send her undercover and put her on the top of my deck. I wanna put her on the top of my deck, I still need those recruit points, so go to the top of the deck. Okay, let's play Hairball, gives me one attack. Draw a card, guess who it is, it's Yo-Yo again. So I play her again, I get two more recruit, and I send her to the top of the deck again. So I've got seven, which means I can afford Rick Jones's rare. Let's take a look at it. If you defeat two villains this turn, transform it into the Destiny Force and put it on top of your deck. Awesome. And refill the HQ. Hairball goes to the sidekick stack, and I end my turn. All right, we're moving right along. I just really want to not draw a scheme twist. So instead, let's draw another villain. Get in the city. It's Rocket, strength of four. Okay, all grays. So let's play them all. All right, that gives me four recruit and three attack. I can buy this Daredevil, which lets me pick a card from the top two. It's basically investigate before there was investigate. And then there's Hacktivist, which gives me two attack and lets me draw a shield card if I have tech. I don't think I have any tech cards. There's not a lot of tech cards in this setup. I'd rather take this Daredevil, which would allow me to pick the card I want. So let's go ahead and recruit Daredevil and see what else comes up. Ooh, wait, that gives a villain a shard. That make, gives me an opportunity to get that shard. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like I have a theme really going with either side. Things seem to be very free for all. Whatever, I'm gonna recruit that one too. And with my three attack, I can fight nothing. Fill the HQ, I almost, almost forgot. And that's it for that turn. All right, let's see. Is this the turn that I throw my artifact? Maybe. So some ghost riders enter the city and now the city is full, kind of dangerous. Can I stop them? Doesn't look hopeful, but we'll see. Oh, I might be able to. Okay, play the gray cards first. That gives me, just like last time, three and two. And then let's play yo-yo. Two more recruit. Once again, I can put it on the top of my deck if I want to, or undercover. I'll put her on the top of my deck. That's pretty cool, just like her hero named Slingshot. This Gamora gives me shards, so I will purchase this Gamora for three. I'm gonna recruit her and refill. Oh, another Suicide Phoenix. With my three attack, I can fight the Ghost Racers. Oh, I did this wrong, totally wrong. Let me back up. I just did a recruit. Let's rewind to the beginning of the turn when they show up. It says Ambush Rise of the Living Dead, and I forgot that means that I need to check my victory piles. In my left victory pile, there is another Ghost Racer. So here's what happens. Rise of the Living Dead triggers. The left side has a Ghost Racer. So these Ghost Racers are going to enter the city and let Drax the Destroyer escape. So let's play that out. Enter the city and Drax here escapes. So he's gonna go to the escape pile, which means that I have to KO one of my heroes in the HQ that costs six or less. Let's get rid of this Rick Jones. It's not gonna do much for me. So let's KO it and refill. Now, okay, so I did my recruit. Now I can fight something. I'll fight one of these guys again. Again, I could throw this and get six attack. Oh, let's do that. I don't want Lafayette to escape because if he does, oh, his escape effect only triggers if he has the artifact. So it's not terrible, but I still wanna get rid of him. So this weapon will come back. So let's look so when i throw it i get plus three so let's throw it to the bottom of my deck and then i get plus three so i'm up at six which means i can fight lafe he has no fight effect so he's just ko'd i'm out of points and i'm out of things to do so end of my turn okay city is almost full let's see what i get and it's groot but unhelpful groot enters the city with the strength of five let's play my great cards okay that's four and one and then we've got Seek the Negaband says, reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs three or more, transform this into Captain Marvel. It's a low chance that'll happen, 
So first I'm going to get the two recruit from him. And now let's check the top card of our deck. Here it is. And it is just a shield agent. Doesn't trigger. Goes back to my deck. So that's all I've got. But I will buy this Phoenix, which will allow me to draw two cards. It's cost six. It's pretty good. The bad news is, well, first let's recruit this Phoenix and refill. The bad news is I have one attack and this is going to escape. No escape effect, but still not good. Well, I mean, there's not much I can do at this point. So that's it. Next turn. All right, hopefully I get a Master Striker Scheme Twist and then nothing will escape. Let's find out. No such luck. So first thing that happens is we enter the city. Troll's going to escape. So all right, and with that, I have to KO somebody. Let's go ahead and KO somebody six or less. We'll get rid of the lowest cost Phoenix here. So KO'd. All right, now we have to refill with literally the same card. Oh, well. Oh, and there's the ambush effect. Rise of the Living Dead. Here's the top of my victory on the right. Here's the top of my victory on the left nothing so I'm safe from that what do I have to play all this fun stuff so gray cards first that's two four let's play yo-yo gives me six let's send her to the top of the deck again let's play Luke cage I get two more makes eight I would get one more recruit for each other card I played that cost four or more but nothing did and finally we will play Gamora Okay, so I just gained two shards not bad cool now's the perfect time to show my shard treasure chest let me pick two Got him. Okay, I've got my two shards. Still can't fight anything, and that's bad, but I can buy something for eight, which is this rare loot cage. Let's take a look. Five attack, you get plus two for each other card you played that cost four or more. Don't have a lot of those, but that might work. So yeah, let's go ahead and recruit this loot cage and refill. It's another Rick Jones. Okay, literally nothing I can fight for one, but I could spend my shards if I want to avoid that escape. So let's do that. I'll spend both shards to get two more attack. Puts me up to three. Let's fight this Ghost Racers and KO it. Reminder that when I fight it, I have to reveal a covert hero, which I don't have, or KO one of your heroes with a fight icon. None of them do, so I'm safe. Okay, safe from escape. I better be drawing these high cost, expensive cards to hit the mastermind maybe at least once. All right, and we've got a villain. It is the Mangog that enters this city. The Mangog gets one attack for each villain in the victory pile of the player on your right. So the player on my right, when I'm playing as the right, is the left. How many villains in the victory pile? One, two, three. So we're gonna have to change this each turn, but just so I know, let me put a three counter right on top. Now I can see what I have. All right, here we are, gray cards first. Okay, that's one attack and three recruit. Next, let's play this Unbreakable Cage. First, I get four attack. Next, once per turn, if a player would gain a wound, you may reveal this card and investigate for any card instead. I don't think that's gonna happen, so just get the four attack. Next, we have Rick Jones. Let's get three attack from him. So I'm up at eight. That's the highest attack I think I've had so far. If you have at least five villains in your victory pile, I have the one. Doesn't transform. Okay, with that eight attack, I could A, hit the Mastermind, or B, hit one of these villains and make sure they don't escape. Rocket Raccoon does not have an escape effect. The only thing that will happen is I'll have to KO another hero from the HQ. It is higher priority. I defeat Malekith so that I don't draw all these scheme twists. So even though the city is full, let's go ahead and hit the mastermind. And his first tactic has revealed itself. Fight. You gain two recruit for each tech hero you have. I happen to have one, so I get two more recruit. So this goes to my victory pile. And what can I do with five recruit? I've got another Rick Jones. It seems like that's the way my deck is going. So let's recruit this Rick Jones and see who takes his place. Oh, it's Daredevil's rare card. Awesome. Something might escape, but I think that was worth it. And bad news, another Ghost Racers. So first they enter the city, letting Rocket Raccoon escape. Then we need to KO something in the, in the HQ. Let's KO this three cost Phoenix. And Rick Jones takes her place. Now we have to do the Rise of the Living Dead ambush effect. And there happens to be, on the top of my victory pile on the left, another Rise of the Living Dead card. So this is going to enter the city, which is going to let this Ghost Racers escape. So enters the city. For the one that escaped, we need to KO another hero from the HQ. Let's do this low-cost Hacktivist card. Let's KO that and replace it with Luke Cage Noir Private Investigations. Well, that was a lot of KOing. I don't think my hero deck is at, at risk of running out of cards, so the escapes aren't that bad for this setup. But let's see what I have in my hand. 
All right, let's play what I've got. These two give me free recruit. This one gives me one attack. Yo-Yo once again gives me two more recruit. She's gonna go on the top of my deck again. That's been very useful. I play my artifact. And finally, I play Luke Cage Noir, which gives me five attack. And I didn't play any other cards that cost four or more, so I don't get any more attack, unfortunately. But five attack's pretty good. Not enough to hit the Mastermind, but I can hit Groot or the Mangog. Oh, the Mangog might be different cost right now. I forgot to change it. Okay, so he gets plus one for each card in the other player's victory pile. Not card, but villain. So there's one villain. No, this is not a villain. It's a Mastermind tactic. There's one villain, so he's just a plus one right now. So I've got a three, three, four, three, and five. I can only fight one thing, or I could fight two ghost racers. Let's clear out the city. Let's fight two ghost racers. Why not? And I don't have a covert card, so I have to KO something with an attack symbol. Oh, I can't do that. But I can throw my artifact, and then I can get nine. Let's do that. Once again, when I throw it, I get three attacks. So let's throw it, put it at the bottom of my deck. I get three more attack out of it. I'm up to nine. Now... I can either clear out the city or I can fight the Mastermind. Again, I don't really care about things escaping right now. Let's hit Malekith again while he doesn't have any artifacts. So we attack him. Oh, he's revealed his villainous weapon tactic. Let's see what it says. Fight, rescue four bystanders. Let's do that first. Cool, public speaker. I get plus one recruit. Here's the next one. Another public speaker. One more recruit for me. Next one. Standard one from the villain set. And the fourth bystander. Standard one from the base set, so only two recruit points, but that's still something. Okay, back to the tactic. Malekith captures a villainous weapon from the city. There aren't in there. Or any player's control. None on the field. Or a discard pile. I just played that one. I'm glad I did. Nothing in my discard pile on the right. So he still doesn't get one. Then this tactic enters the city as a villainous weapon. Now this one will enter. So the ghost racers get the weapon. So now they are a seven. Okay, with my 7 Recruit, I could almost get the Daredevil card, but I can't. This Phoenix is the most expensive card. Let's see what it says. Oh, this is the one where I draw two cards, then I can rescue a KO'd card from that turn. That'll help me with the escaping card, so let's go ahead and recruit her. Alright, next turn. Oops, forgot to replenish. Another Phoenix. No Scheme Twist, no Scheme Twist. Oh, it's Groot. Okay, this Groot lets this Groot escape. That's weird. Okay, guess what? In my hand this turn... I have this Phoenix card. This Phoenix card is the one that resurrects something. So if a hero was KO'd this turn, I get to put it in my discard pile. So with that Groot that escaped, I have to KO something that costs six or less. Unfortunately, I don't have any six cost ones, but are there any cards that I want on the right side? Investigate for a card that costs four or more, maybe. To recruit, not really. One time use Soaring Flight. Piercing Energy, maybe. More recruit, not really. And not really this one. So I either want one of these two. This will allow me to maybe get a card I need by investigating. That means look at the top two, pick one. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to KO this one as part of the escape effect. So for now, I will KO it and refill it. Here's what I have. I've got three shield agents. I'll play them all for three recruit. Now I've got Gamora, Bounty Hunter. If I play this card though, hmm... Okay, so I get two recruit and a villain gets a shard. I want to give it to the weakest villain so I can fight that villain and get the shard back. So let's give it to these ghost racers so I can fight them hopefully for four and get a shard. So shard, all right. Now we'll play Rick Jones. First two recruit. Let's reveal the top card of my deck. If it is cost three or more, I get to transform him. Let's see, it is not. So he unfortunately stays untransformed. Now we get to play this Phoenix. First, I'll draw two cards. One is this one, one more recruit for me. The second one is another one, one more recruit for me. You may put a hero that was KO'd this turn into your discard. Now I'm gonna get that Luke Cage I got rid of and put him in my discard. Okay, once again, I find myself with a ton of recruit and no attack, but I did get enough recruit to buy this Daredevil. Will it be useful? Let's see. Four attacks, not bad, but that only triggers if I have an Avengers card and only Daredevil has the Avengers team affiliation so this may be hard to trigger but if i do trigger it i discard the top two cards of my deck if they have different cards i get plus two and i get to repeat that so let me just check my discard pile do i have a lot of daredevils no i don't really have any daredevils so this might be bad to buy over here what about what about my other discard pile i don't really have a lot of daredevils anywhere but it is for attack so i'm gonna buy it anyway so recruit and refill so my first dual card I get to see an Iron Fist cameo and maybe buy that for six at some point, but right now my turn is pretty much over. Who's coming after Groot? 
Uh oh, Master Strike time. Let's get rid of that and remind ourselves what happens. Okay, Malekith captures a villainous weapon from the city or from any player's controller discard pile. There is one in the city now, so he's gonna capture this one. So this one goes right to Malekith. All right, then this Master Strike enters the city as a villainous weapon called Dark Spear that gives two attack. So Groot gets the Dark Spear and he gets plus two out of it. That's not good. So now Malekith is a 12, but I gotta put his card back. Okay, he's stronger than ever. He has two more tactics and then I do the final blow so I have to hit him three more times. Now it's even harder. However, if I do hit him, I get the weapon. So if I can generate 12 attack one time, that would be best. All right, a few gray cards this turn. That's gonna give me two and one. Then I've got Yo-Yo, gives me two more. Do I wanna send her undercover again? Yes, I will. I mean, do I wanna put her at the top of my deck again? Yes, I will do that. Now I get to play two Rick Jones. Here's the first one. Reminder, two recruit for this one. Reveal the top card of your deck if it costs three or more, transform him. Oh, I put back Yo-Yo and she is a three. I would have planned that out if I read that card first, but he transforms, so transform. Awesome, now I play him. He gets two attack. Reveal the top card of your deck if it costs three or more, and we already know it does. Draw it, so let's put this into play. Okay, which means two more recruit and I'll put it on top of the deck again. Okay, and finally we will play our rare Rick Jones. First they get four attacks, so three goes up to seven. If you defeat two villains this turn, transform this into the destiny force and put it on top of your deck. Can I defeat two villains? I've got seven attack. This is a three, this is a four. I can totally do that. Good news, so let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna say that Rick Jones transformed into Captain Marvel and sends two very strong Nega energy blasts towards the Ghost Racers. So first, let's fight the one with the shard. First, we KO it. Reminder, the fight effect says reveal a covert hero, which I will do. This is covert, so I don't have to do the effect. And then I will take that shard and I'm back down to three. Let's fight our second villain, which is the other Ghost Racers. So KO this one too. And Again, I reveal my covert. I just defeated two villains, which means Rick Jones is going to transform into, nice, the Destiny Force. Count the number of different printed victory pile values in your victory pile, draw that many cards. I meant victory point values in your victory pile. So let's see, we've got, these are cost one, these all cost one. One, 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 four, and three. Well, that is three different levels of points. But this Destiny Force is gonna stay in my deck now, which is awesome, but I get to draw three cards. Let's do it. Okay, here's the three I drew. Let's first do the gray card. Okay, plus one for me. Oh, I got Yo-Yo again. So I get the two recruit, and let's put her back on top of my deck. Okay, and I've got follow big leads. Two more recruit, up to 13 recruit. You get one recruit for each other card you play that costs four or more. What did this one cost? I don't remember. Detransformed. Oh, it costs seven, so that counts. Retransformed. And this one also, before it transformed, it was a four. So these count double, okay? So each card you play this turn that costs four or more. So that was one, two, three, four, plus itself is five. So five more recruit gives me 18 recruit. That is insane. If only I could con convert that into attack, but I cannot. So let's just buy some expensive stuff. First, let's look at this Daredevil Iron Fist. So I can do three recruit and then basically do a wall crawl or get one attack for each different cost of hero. So let's recruit these guys back down to 12, refill the HQ. Oh, Malekith is six. So if I buy both of these Phoenixes, yeah, check it out. Piercing Energy will get through any additional buffs they get. So he is a 12, but his, uh, his victory points are still six. So I could use both of these and get a free basic, basically a free hit on him. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let's buy both of these at the same time. Well, I can't do that. Let's recruit the first one and see what comes up. And it is another Luke Cage. All right, let's recruit the second one. And in her place, oh, another one of those. Okay, guess what? Those both had soaring flight. So on my next turn, I will have both of those Phoenixes and I can hit Malekith right away. That's really good, but I'm down to no more recruit. Oh, I used my attack. Pretty productive turn if I say so myself, but I will end it there. All right, I'm doing well so far. I might win this. Depends on what this is gonna be. Oh, another Ghost Racers. First they enter the city. Next they do Ambush Rise of the Living Dead. Oh, I think we're in for some trouble here. So let's trigger that. Okay, here's my victory pile. So first, one of these enters the city and that one has an ambush effect and it brings this one back into the city, which is going to let this one escape. 
Luckily we have no more, but I do have to KO something in the HQ for that escaped henchman. Let's get rid of this Phoenix. She'll come back. She always does. And replace her with... Ooh, an uncommon Gamora. That could be useful. I'm so lucky escaped villains aren't that harmful in this setup. Alright, so what we have here, two recruit and three attack. Okay, these two cards are actually going to work really well together. So dual existence, look at the top two cards of your deck, draw one and put the other back. Let's see what they are. We've got a shield trooper and a shield agent. I'm going to end up with them both, so I'll just take the shield trooper now, put the other one back, get the one more attack point for it. Okay, then I play Phoenix. She lets me draw two cards first. Okay, those were drawn. And then reminder, she lets me put a hero that was KO'd this turn into my discard pile. What was KO'd this turn? This Phoenix that lets me KO a card. Hmm, I don't really want the recruit points right now. I need to get the attack points out, so I'm not going to save this one. Goes back, back to the KO pile with you. Now let's play this gray card. One more recruit from that. And let's play Bounty Hunter. Two more recruit. And a villain gains a shard. Let's give it to one of these ghost racers. The one that's least likely to escape will get the shard. Perfect. Hey, I have four attack. Let's attack. Oh, let's see how strong Mangog is. Remember, he gets plus one for each villain in the victory pile of the opposite player. So I've got, yeah, just the, oh, I got two. So he is a two strength. So I can't fight him. I can fight this one with the shard. I'm going to fight this one with the shard. First, let's fight it. Give it a KO. Okay, I reveal these two red cards so the effect does not trigger. And I get this shard, thank you very much. And my attack is gone. Now I've got five recruit. Let's take a look at this Galactic Assassin. Three attack and a villain of your choice gets no attack from shards this turn. Two reds, which I met this time. The mastermind gets no attack from shards this turn. Not great, but again, three attack is three attack. So let's go ahead and recruit her. All right, and we've got another Gamora up here. All right, next turn. And who have we saved this nice city space for? Ooh, a new mutant bystander. Looks like she's riding with the ghost racers. This should be a good turn. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is use these two phoenixes for let's let's play them first. And a reminder, they have piercing energy. I get eight piercing energy from them and then I KO them. So Malekith has six victory points. So we're gonna attack Malekith with that obliterating fire. Okay, that hurt him a bit. So first we have to take care of this villainous weapon. I have fought him, so I get to rescue this villainous weapon as an artifact, so this goes to my discard pile. That fight was too much for these phoenixes, so they are both going to get KO'd. Now let's see what Malekith does. He's going to use the Dagger of Living Abyss. So first we rescue four bystanders. Awesome. Let's see what we get. Bystander 1 is a computer hacker. When you kidnap or rescue, because this is not a villain's game, draw an extra card when you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn. Alright, I'm going to put a little die on my deck so I remind myself to draw an extra card. Next bystander is Undercover Agent. When you rescue this bystander, a player gets a shield officer, a player of your choice. Hmm, I don't really want anybody to get it, but I have to, so the shield officer, I'll give it to the right side. What do we get? Oh, another yo-yo. Lucky me. Okay, this definitely goes to the right side. Next bystander, bystander number three, Radiation Scientist. When you rescue it, you may KO one of your heroes or a hero from your discard. Hey, who's in my discard? Let's go ahead and get rid of this shield agent. Sorry, KO'd. And the fourth and final bystander? Just a regular one, no big deal. Okay, back to Malekith. Malekith captures a villainous weapon from the city or from any player's control or discard pile. Okay, so he's gonna capture the one that was a master strike that Groot has. So Groot loses his artifact and it goes right to Malekith. That's too bad. At least he's not plus four, he's just plus two now. Then this tactic enters the city as a villainous weapon. Looks like it's gonna go to our ghost racer with the magic bystander. So that's a five strength. Okay, I haven't played any of these yet. So let's do that part now. Let's play the gray cards. Okay, that's three recruit, one attack. Let's play yo-yo, two more recruit, and she will zigzag back to the top of my deck. Now we'll play this deadliest woman in the universe, Gamora. Okay, gain two shards, don't mind if I do. Colorful. Okay, I have three shards, should I use them to fight anything? No, I'll hold off and let, and, uh, in the case I can use them to fight Malekith. So I will end my turn. Oh, I have to buy something. I don't have to, but I want to. How many villains in my victory pile? Maybe I can transform that into Avon. They're all bystanders. I only have two. Nothing really works here. You know what, I want this location Noir because it's a red covert card and I can investigate. So let's go ahead and recruit this one and refill it. Oh, and it is a card that I desperately want, so hopefully I can buy it soon. But right now, end my turn. Okay, no scheme twist, please. Oh, funny joke. Okay, Master Strike. 
It's gonna enter the city, I remember that. Okay, reminder, Malekith captures a villainous weapon from the city or any player's control or discard pile. Now, there is one in the city already. Okay, so he's gonna capture an additional villainous weapon as a villainous weapon and not a tactic from these ghost racers. So this goes right to Malekith. Okay, so he's just super duper strong now. Three plus two plus two. So he is a seven strength. Then the Master Strike enters the city as a villainous weapon called Dark Spear. So this, this ghost racer is gonna get a villainous weapon anyway. Good for him. Okay, let's put Malekith back. Oh, that was his tactic. So no, he is an eight plus two plus two. He is a 12. That's unfortunate. Let's hope I can get 12 this turn. It's not looking like it, but at least I get this four recruit here. And then let's play Private Investigations. Two attack for me and I get to investigate for a card that costs four or more. Here's the top of my deck. Let's investigate. First card. No, second card. Oh, this one costs four or more. I want this one. Let's put this back. So now let's play Irradiated Blood. Okay, three attack, and as just a reminder, if I have at least five villains in my victory pile, transform in him into a bomb and put him on top of my deck. So, do I have that? One, two, or just actually two, because Malekith is not a villain, he's a mastermind. So I, that does not transform, but I do get three attack out of it. And now I'll play Master of Martial Arts. If he transformed, that would have triggered, but it didn't. At least I get the four attack from it, which is 12. And is that enough to hit? I think it is. He's eight, 10, 12. Yes, it is. So I'm going to hit the mastermind once again and get all his artifacts. So attack. Okay, awesome. This is his last tactic. Now, because I'm doing the final blow, I have not won yet, but I'm one step closer. So yeah, all 12 attack is gone. Fight, rescue four bystanders. Let's do this again. Bystander one is an alligator trapper. When you rescue this bystander, patrol the sewers. If it's empty, which it is, I get two recruit. Not bad. Next bystander is nothing special. Third bystander, I get one recruit for this one. And the fourth and final bystander is Warlock. When I rescue this bystander, gain it as a hero. Don't mind if I do. Back to his effect. Malekith captures a villainous weapon from the city or any player's control or discard. I can choose though. I'm gonna give him this uh, spear that he created. So he is now a 10 strength. And then this goes to the Ghost Racers again. Okay, seven recruit. Can't buy this Gamora, but just for fun, I'm gonna recruit this one. So recruit these guys and replace it with, oh, Phoenix is rare. I may not need to use it. All I need next turn is 10 attack. As you can see, I have three more scheme twists until I lose. I just need in at least three turns to get 10 attack and I win. I think that's doable, especially with these shards. Let's see if I can use them. All right, is this the scheme twist I don't want? No, it's the ghost racers I don't really want. So as they enter the city, they're going to ambush with Rise of the Living Dead. Luckily, I don't have any Rise of the Living Dead henchmen on either side. So I'm safe from that. Can I get 10 attack this turn? Let's see. All right, it's looking promising. So my gray cards will give me two recruit and my first attack, my villainous weapon, my Yarnborn, first axe of Thor, is a thrown artifact, which will give me three attack. Let's throw it. Throw to the bottom of my deck. My deck is literally zero cards empty, except for that Yarnborn. So if I draw a card, it'll be that one. Oh, let's get the three attack from it. Now let's look at the split card. The Iron Fist side will give me one attack for each different cost of hero I have. So I've got zeros and threes. That'll only give me two attack, but I mean, I'll take it. Okay, so I get the two, brings me up to six. I play Yo-Yo, I put her at the top of my deck and I get two recruit. And then finally, Gamora gives me two shards. Gain two shards and then gain another shard. I don't have a covert, but I get two shards. Let's do red ones for theming. Awesome, all right. So I've got six attack and I have one, two, three, four, five shards. I've got six attack, I need 10 attack. I only have to exchange four for four more attack. So let's swap out four of these guys. Okay, for four more attack, which is gonna give me 10, which is just enough to hit Malekith for eight plus two, and that will KO him completely. Woo! And we have done it. We have prevented Malekith from mutating the entire earth with gamma rays. So how long until we had lost? I just wanna take a look. Oh, we had two scheme twists on the bottom. So we weren't gonna pull them all for a while. But even so, we did really well. Awesome, thanks for watching. Real quick before we go, I want you to guess which side, left or right, 
won this game? Who had the most victory points? I'm gonna give you just 10 seconds to guess. Ready, go. Okay, let's go ahead and clear my board here. Let's start with the left side. How many victory points did the left side get? 21. This is tricky because most of the tactics were uh, weapons that don't end up in the victory pile. So 21 here. How many on the right? 15. It was close. If you guessed the left, you were right with 21 over 15. All right, another successful victory. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more legendary Marvel DBG randomizers. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for updates on when we go live and when new videos are posted. And uh, that's it. Until next time, this has been Bagel Top Games signing out. Take care.